So I will talk to you today about uh, multimodal simulation of demand responsive shared automated vehicles in the Tel Aviv and also Jerusalem metropolitan area. I'm a PhD student at Tel Aviv University. I have uh, Ido Klein, Alexei, uh, Ran Benelia, and Professor Yitzhak Benenson as people are conducting this research. So, one second, why is it working? Okay, so my tool that I work with is called Matsim. It's a Java-based open source tool for uh, traffic simulation. Um, you can do large scale simulation. You can simulate a neighborhood, a city or a country. And you can also look at, at the microscopic traffic modeling. You can see a vehicle traversing uh, links. You don't have lane following, but you can see where public transport uh, boards and the lights, passengers and so on. You have the microscopic behavioral part. This is activity based. So here is an example for an agent. He have home, he uses car to go to work. And uh, you have millions of these kinds of agents and the emerging behavior inside the model create traffic uh, interactions. But Matsim also has complex adaptive systems. So an agent can change his time when to depart, which route to take and which transport mode to take. So if he now try to use uh, a bus instead of a car and it will make him arrive to work earlier, he will use it in the next iteration. And each iteration it maps him, in Matsim represents a day. Um, here I will show you an application. We use Matsim for building the Jerusalem metropolitan area model, which is uh, new. We have a Tel Aviv one. This is the metropolitan one for uh, Jerusalem. So you can see here, uh, this is Jerusalem. We have traffic going inside. These are private cars with different speeds. We have also the Kevet Kala, we have public transport you see here now, and the color represents the capacity of people inside the model. Now, the motivation for using this kind of simulation is because all the planners in Israel, unfortunately, are using aggregate, aggregate for state kind of uh, simulations, and you can't use that for a future, I don't know, uh, automated service, shared riding, uh, micro simulation. So, this tool can provide for planners a uh, way to plan the future. This model, uh, we have here uh, 400 internal agents, meaning agents inside the metropolitan area. We have uh, 100,000 external agents and they account for 30% of the population. We just uh, published a paper which we can say that we can use 30% or between 10 and 30% of the population and model real characteristics of a full-scale model. We have GTFS data, we have counts data, the network is an EMI-based, and that was the Tel Aviv one, the Jerusalem one. Here I will show you the calibration of uh, count stations. Here we have count stations and simulation volumes. This is the Jerusalem one model. Here is the R square between the counts and simulation. You can see it's quite high with no calibration. With calibration, it's higher. With Tel Aviv, I didn't show you the model. Believe me, it exists. We have here the non-calibrated one. We have less traffic counts for Tel Aviv, but the calibration of uh, traffic counts uh, is better. Uh, if somebody asked, want to ask me how we did the calibration, I will just uh, tell you about it afterwards. So here we have in uh, Jerusalem, uh, dynamics of public transport. So you can see here, this is a simulation from Herzl to Pisgat Zev. It's the dashed line here. And here above, we can see real data. So we have uh, Sfirot boarding counts from the Kevet Kala, and we have also Ravkab data. So our model in Jerusalem uh, kind, kind of uh, reacts uh, accurately to Ravkab data. We're still in calibration process of uh, public transport, and this is all uh, preliminary results, but kind of advanced ones. So here you can see, um, this is Jerusalem again. You can see activities of different agents, leisure, school, work, home. And here, here you can see the graph across the day. So I'm gonna press play. And you can see when you see something ticks, somebody is going to work, somebody going home, somebody is doing something. And here we can see a time series of what happened across the day, how many people are at work, home, and so on. This is just a visualization of the Jerusalem model. And now I will talk to you about the shared automated vehicles. So how does the algorithm we use work? I will go uh, quickly. 
So you just go out, I don't know, from your home, you take your phone, you order a shared automated vehicle, and the algorithm checks that it can come for you from uh, before the maximum waiting time. You have a seat across all the ride, and this is very important that the ride duration is less than TR max, meaning that your direct distance or travel time can't be, I don't know, uh, uh, larger than one and a half, and there is also a beta that's a constant. So if you put here one and a half, you can say that uh, a shared ride can be one and a half longer than a ride you will do by your own. And it also, if you're inside a vehicle and you wanna insert another passenger, it needs to check that the current threshold is not violated. If so, you, the algorithm rejects uh, a passenger. And if you apply more choice, uh, rejected, rejected agents could move to other uh, vehicles. So this is the assumptions uh, we used. External trips from and to Jerusalem and Tel Aviv metropolitan area are not served by SAVs, meaning that in Jerusalem, only this kind of uh, shared automated vehicles are served. Oh, and it will show you here. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, let's press play. So here you can see, um, you can see on the right, uh, a simulation where you have public transport. The red dots are shared automated vehicles. You can see the numbers, how many passengers are inside, the time of the day moving. And you can see also public transport. So this is multimodal with shared automated vehicles, with public transport, everything inside. Maxim, where is the public transport? I think in six in the morning. Yeah, here you can see public transport, shared automated vehicle and private cars. And our assumptions are like this. We used for Jerusalem 15,000 vehicles, which are equivalent to 25,000 vehicles if we compare the population sizes. And for Tel Aviv, for the multimodal, we used 10,000 vehicles and also 25. We, we published a paper why we think 25 is a viable solution. We checked a 10-seater cars, and uh, SAV utilities, meaning that the willingness of people to move to shared automated vehicles are the same as PT, as public transport for Jerusalem. And in Tel Aviv, we try different scheming prices. And for the uh, uh, formula I told you before, we checked and uh, a shared ride will not be one and a half longer than uh, a regular ride. I'm not gonna touch why we choose these parameters. It's in a different concept. So that's so, all sorry? Two minutes, please. Two minutes, okay, I will try to be fast. So here we can see uh, uh, some statistics of 25,000 vehicles, uh, different utilities. We can see the statistics are the same. Um, here is the calibrated model model split. Here we can see what happens with 25K vehicles, 10,000K vehicles when the utilities are, are exactly as public transport, when the uh, public transport utilities are uh, five times or three times. So the prices doesn't matter when you have a, a kind of a vehicles that are not serving everybody. And here we can see, uh, and this is Tel Aviv. Uh, we can see that the passenger occupancy doesn't change a lot with different pricing schemes. It's close to two. Um, here in Jerusalem, the Jerusalem, the occupancy, we have only one, uh, one utility just as public transport. Uh, you can see the occupancy is higher because Jerusalem is more center oriented. And here you can see the model split uh, from how many people move to shared automated vehicle from each, which modes. Here are some of the statistics. We have low rejections, uh, low average waiting times, but it's not the ultimate mode choice. And for conclusion, what I want to say is that if we have a, a small a shared automated vehicle fleet, uh, it will have low level of service. On the other hand, if we have a, a high, a large fleet, we will have high costs. So the balance is somewhere is in between. So we believe it will not become the ultimate uh, transport mode. This is why we believe we need a metro and other public transport service. And conclusion from not from this study, from this paper about Tel Aviv. So if Tel Aviv will be rich, you will need 100K vehicles for a door to door service and 75K for stop base, and, uh, but it's not viable. And four seats will suffice in Tel Aviv because the occupancy is close to two. In Jerusalem, it will be six seats. And uh, the rejection rate are going to be very low. And most of the rejection from and to the outer metrop metropolitan region, uh, region. And if Tel Aviv will be rational, the fleet will be 25K, something like that, with rejection rate of 20%.
Um, yeah, and that's it. And uh, I want to thank Schmelzer Institution for uh, funding part of my PhD.